Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Mullen coming to you from my 2V studio here in San Diego. Don't adjust your computer screen. I know this may look a bit different than a typical broadcast because we're doing everything within our power to limit contact with others and safely maintain physical distance. And I don't think we're unique in all of this. In fact, I've spoken with a lot of friends and colleagues throughout San Diego, and the overwhelming sentiment is that things, as you know, are just different right now. Now let's check in with an organization in North County that has morphed their annual volunteer awards and community impact awards into one online event to accommodate all of these changes. We have Don Stump, Executive Director for North County Lifeline here. Uh, Don, let's talk about this online event. You picked a fitting title under construction. Uh, the construction, is it a reflection of the current times? Yeah, so the, the theme of our awards event this year is under construction. And the, and the truth is, um, I, I've always loved that theme and I think it really fits well with who Lifeline is because it's a point of view. We always have to look at ourselves as being under construction. Uh, there's always new needs in the community that we need to respond to. Uh, there's always new adaptations to our program. Um, and then, of course, COVID has given us uh, a, an amazing reason to grow and adapt at this point in our life. So I think looking at ourselves as under construction um, means that we're always growing and we're never good enough and we're always trying to find a new way to respond. Well, it sounds like North County Lifeline has plenty of practice with building programs and uh, adjusting services based on what the community really needs. Question is, uh, what are some of Lifeline's major influences? How have all of these influences shaped what the agency is doing today, Don? So North County Lifeline was founded by the community, by community volunteers, and it's always labeled itself as a community-based organization. And because of that, that's really our major influence. We always see ourselves as a partner with the community. We're always looking for uh, input from both our clients and from the community about what are emerging needs and, and what more can we do uh, to help the community. Um, and then secondly, that uh, major influence is that we know that we can't do this work alone. And so uh, Lifeline has been committed for almost our entire 50 years to not only participating in collaborations, but building them uh, as ways to bring resources to our clients and bring our resources to other organizations as a way to, to build uh, the solutions that people really need uh, rather than trying to be everything to every client. So not only have Lifeline programs adapted and grown over the years, but you've also seen a lot of growth. Can you talk about that? Yes, Lifeline seems to be in a pattern of growing and I think you know, talking about our ability to adapt and respond have uh, made us uh, an organization where there's always an opportunity to grow in terms of a new service, as in we, when we created our, our victim and survivor services for human trafficking victims, uh, to grow geographically. Currently, we're expanding some of our youth development and um, uh, juvenile crime prevention services to countywide. Um, and then it's also, you know, really thinking about the budget growing. Um, our budget is primarily made up of people. And so that growth really gives us the opportunity to bring more people who become problem solvers, who become partners with our clients and help them really reach their highest potential. So I've seen some information about your emergency fund on social media. Given our times, how has COVID-19 impacted the agency as a whole? COVID-19 has had a huge impact on North County Lifeline. Um, and I think one of the key things is that it reminded us that we are essential services. And I think we always felt that way, uh, but when the community is in need and when crisis is happening, uh, what COVID-19 reminded us is that we needed to stay open. We needed to stay here for our clients who were experiencing already existing family violence, mental health, um, substance abuse, homeless, uh, a whole variety of, of things and so we needed to stay open for them and then secondly we needed to uh, look at what were the unique needs that COVID-19 created for them and mostly uh, they got laid off or furloughed from work and all of a sudden they're in economic crisis and for us the real 
uh, challenge was how do we both do the behavioral health and the counseling and case management work that we need to do with our clients and at the same time help them to survive, meet basic needs, food, housing, rental assistance, and all those emergency things that they need. Um, and I do have to say our philanthropic community really stepped up. Um, San Diego Foundation, Rancho Santa Fe Foundation, Coastal Community Foundation, um, Leash Tag Foundation, Nordson, uh, Genentech, all our community partners really stepped up and helped us to help the clients in the community, uh, plus hundreds and hundreds of individual donors. So it's been an amazing experience about how a community can come together and really help people in need. NBC7 has covered a lot of the events since the death of George Floyd. How has the current social justice conversation impacted Lifeline and informed what you all do? I think there's another way in which North County Lifeline is under construction right now, and I think it fits well with the theme of our uh, program this year, which is um, when we were awaken again to some of the social justice needs of our clients, uh, of the community, of our staff, uh, it became important to take that same point of view of we are under construction. And my first discussion with staff was, um, how have we already been in this space of social justice? And we have been working for years and years and years on the disproportionality of young people in the criminal justice system, um, the disproportionality of people of color in child welfare system and kids in out-of-home placement. And we've done amazing work and we've actually been part of the solution for all those problems. But this current movement basically said to us, we're not done yet. There's a lot more work to be done have we looked at ourselves? Have we looked at how we operate? Have we looked at the programs we design? Have we looked at the systems and partners that we work with and asked the question, what more can we do and are we done yet? And, uh, and the resounding answer from our team is, we're not done yet, but we're excited to get to the work that needs to be done. And so I'm, um, I'm happy to say that our our cultural competence committee and our direct service staff have weighed in pretty heavily and I think we're really putting together a sustainable plan where this isn't kind of a one and done but it's really how do we start transforming the way our organization views um, not only disproportionality but what are our roles as advocates to our clients and to systems. So these are definitely conversations that so many think are important to keep having. So going back to the theme for your event, I hear that uh, you are quite literally under construction at your Vista campus. Can you talk about the reason behind the Vista remodel and also the new space, please? So North County Lifeline has had uh, a committee called the Trauma-Informed Committee that's cross-program, cross-agency. And part of it is how are we building programs where we're really tuned into what do the clients need, what triggers their trauma, what, what are the effects of their trauma on the way that they'll best be successful in services. And one of the pieces of input that we got from both our clients and from our staff through this committee was that our space here on the Vista campus had become less respectful. It, um, the best way to describe it is there's a lot of activity here on this campus. Hundreds of groups, <laughs> thousands of people walking across this campus every day in our group rooms, our community rooms, and we had gotten tired. The spaces looked tired and the furniture was tired. And, uh, and I think the impact on our clients and our staff was it just sort of made them tired and not feel really respected. very hard to raise money, uh, to build partnerships, and to look at ways through our funding that we already have, how we can pay to really remodel the space um, to make it the most respectful space for both our staff and the clients that we serve uh, so they feel the dignity of the work that we do.
So, Don, that is some makeover that these rooms have undergone. I suspect our next speaker as well has witnessed quite a few transformations within the Club Crown Heights after school program. We're lucky to have Barbara Moreno, site lead at Club Crown Heights, with us today. And, Barb, can you give everyone some program updates, please? Hi, my name is Barbara Moreno. I've been working for North County Lifeline for almost 21 years. And I've been working at the Crown Heights Resource Center, uh, the Club Crown Heights program for North County Lifeline for, um, gosh, I believe 16 years. Um, I love my program. I love my kids. I love my job. Um, everything about it. It's just perfect. Uh, even the community I work in. I've built such positive relationships with them that um, I'm a part of their, they're a part of my family and I'm a part of their family. It's not just a summer or after school program. It's a, it's a family program. And uh, I'm very happy to be working for North County Lifeline because they've allowed me to run free with the um, program that I've fallen in love with, basically. But during this COVID-19, this pandemic, it's been a little bit of a struggle. First of all, I lost pretty much all contact with the kids because we were all in the shuffle. How are we going to make this work? How am I going to still see my kids and, uh, you know, communicate with them? Because I know they from working with them for so long, I know that they are just as scared as, and confused as I was. Uh, school all of a sudden ended, the program all of a sudden ended, and everything went blank. So I started communication via emails and via text. Uh, they were so happy to be able to hear from me and Francisco, uh, my staff, my supervisor. They were so happy to hear from us. Um, that you know it gave them some kind of hope you know to be able to talk to somebody that was p part of their family um uh during that time um you know talking over weeks the f question that kept on coming up was are you going to be open when are you going to open when is the escuelita going to be open um and we didn't have answers um but when we, when I would talk to them on the on the texting, or I would see a little bit of a struggles in some of the kids, like they were starting to slow down, their messages weren't as happy, was weren't as excited to see me. So then we uh, started saying, you know, I talked with my supervisor and I said, we got to do something for these kids. We got to give them back something. We have to energize them. You know, uh, we knew that um, spring break was going to come up, even though they were already out of school. And we knew the holiday, um, the Easter holiday was coming up. And I just felt like we needed to do more. So me and my supervisor went, uh, got some approvals, and we went shopping that day and bought all these kids about uh, 35 baskets and filled them up with little goodies and things that coloring books and things they, they could draw and, and colored pencils and um, candy and just little finger toys and stuff like that that they could play with, that they could get their mind off of the reality of this COVID-19. And what's so great about it is that we got okays, that we got permission to go and do this. That's what's so great and awesome about North County Lifeline and all the contributors that donated um, to Crown Club Crown Heights and La Casita and La Escuelita programs because it allowed us to go and do this for the kids. We got smiles on kids' faces. We got never-ending appreciation. We earned a respect and just to know more that we are still there for them. Of course, weeks persisted and still in this pandemic, we weren't able to open our doors but then came graduation. Graduation was a day where we had 12 seniors graduate. And 
we were said, what, what are we going to do? The schools were closed. Only the kids were allowed to go there. And this is uh, something that the staff, Club Crown Heights, celebrated with these youth. We were the, the, some of their parents or mentors or uh, brother or sister or grandmother that went there to celebrate this holiday with them. So we were the ones that went to the graduations. And to, for us not to be able to go was going to be hardship. They were starting to say, oh, I'm just going to get the piece of paper in the mail. I don't want to go to graduation. So we came up with an idea, uh, along with uh, North County Lifeline staff and Monet, our, our, our Wonder Woman Monet. She helped us out, and we brought um, graduation fiesta for them. So we had some canopies put up in the back uh, of the Crown Heights Resource Center, um, just behind it. And every car that the kids graduated in and that drove by, they were greeted with uh, horns, a microphone, giving encouragement. Some got candy lays, money lays. It was just pure excitement. Even for the youth that did not attend Crown Heights, every senior that went by our booth or our canopy was enjoyed the celebration of graduation and it just brought so many huge kudos back to lifeline to and the appreciation just from the cars of the people that were saying thank you so much for parents we congratulated the parents and it we just were a part of a big party and um Lifeline being able to come through with my 13 kids that graduated and they took personal photos of them like they were in honor of something so special. It made them feel so good inside that they were graduating. One moment they had looked forward to for 12 years of schooling and they were able to see pictures and uh, just be so gifted. Again, with the, the, the lays, the money lays that are donated to us from... Um, Rotary, the, they've done it for years, and we were still allowed to do that. Those kind of organizations that come forth for us and help us out and, and give us to all of our kids that are there to, to show an enormous amount of appreciation. We could not do, I could not do my job if it wasn't for all of you coming forth and helping this great organization. And it, and it makes a difference, and we are making a difference. There was one more holiday I did forget in between the graduation and um, Easter, was Dia de los Niños. And uh, that was another great event that we did. Uh, it's, we celebrated April 30th, and it's the Day of the Youth, the Day of the Kids. And uh, that was something else that we would hold an event there at the center, collaborate with a bunch of organizations. We'd close down the center, but we'd use the park out front to have music, a food. It was like a day of celebration for the youth. Face painting, we did all kinds of things that day. But again, we were stuck in this COVID. Well, we, the staff, North County Lifeline, we all, and the OPD of Oceanside, we all coordinated together to bring these kids a Dia de los Niños. So we got the big transformer from Oceanside PD and we were able to make these uh, gift bags of hot Cheetos, candy, some little rattle makers and stuff. We only made enough, and the city of Oceanside helped us also, but we only made enough for 260 kids but we had a lot of single items in the back. We served over 360 families. They all lined the streets of, <clears throat> excuse me, Crown Heights. They all lined the streets in the neighborhood, different neighborhoods. We went on a probably a six block um, neighborhood and all these streets were aligned with youth, families, and they were, you know, music blasting. They were just applauding us like we were a parade and they were so excited. That was the most amazing thing. But what I really wanna to say today, again, and reiterate that the contributions and 
the donation of backpacks and school items that we get are allowed to give these organizations that come forward to donate that that we're allowed to give still to these youth are enormous and to me that just makes my head heart ten times bigger it's like the cat in a hat or his heart explodes my heart explodes each time we're able to do something so amazing for these kids it just explodes because there's never a no especially especially when it comes to these youth there's never a no it's like let's see what we can do and so far let's see what we can do has happened and I can't tell you from the bottom of my heart and from all my kids I speak for all of them that I give a gigantic thank you there's still a lot a lot more to do there's still a lot of work um, with the students and the teachers but we're all working together but still thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this happen for making this work and for always always supporting North County Lifeline you're making a difference thank you Thanks, Barb. You can really tell how much all of the participants really mean to you. And I know there are quite a few Lifeline programs like Club Crown Heights that have had participants come back and work for Lifeline. So today we get to hear from Melody Dietrich, who is a youth and young adult advocate for the LifeSpring program and also a former LifeSpring program participant herself. Melody. Um, hi, I'm Melody Dietrich, and I'm the youth and young adult advocate for our drop-in center services with the LifeSpring program. Um, I am a former participant of our housing, the THP Plus housing program with LifeSpring, and I aged out about one year ago and started working here with Lifeline in um, December of last year. So it's been amazing to have um, my program manager see me as a participant and now see me as an employee, continuing to grow my career development as I share my experience, my strength, and my hope with my clients. Um, the drop-in center has grown immensely in these nine months. It's amazing to see the clients that we started with nine months ago, six months ago, and now are housed with a job, with you know that like glimmer in their eyes where they can actually smile and feel um, feel like they're they're adding to this community. They're, they're a contributing member of the society now. And it's, it's, it's beautiful to watch. I know that when we started this drop-in center, our goal was to reach about, I think, 40 or 45 um, clients per year. And we just hit 100 last month. Um, and, and again, it's just it's beautiful to see the, the, the change in, in each person. And it's just continuing to, to grow and to be able to provide those services like the shower and the, the computer lab and um, you know I am kind of a whiz with a resume so I'll help them with a resume and then seeing that client that I was able to help with their resume get that job that they've been trying for three months to get especially during this pandemic it's beautiful it's it's something that I'm so grateful for and um, I just feel like it's not a job like I would do this work for free it's just something that I'm so passionate about I know everyone on my team is just as passionate about it so as I mentioned, I was a participant of this program. I was recently, before I got into the THP housing program, I had been in about four other housing programs, all specifically tailored to the former foster youth community. And I think that's what made the difference for North County Lifeline because I have seen how um, you know my community is, is treated. And, and when I got here, I was, I was received with love and with dignity and respect and no judgment at all. Um, I literally had to be on the street in 110 heat with just a luggage and now when I see my clients and I and I can look at them in the face and let them know that I've been there and I know the the struggle of not having a car or not having someone to call and when you get to lifeline like there's people that you can call there's people that do care and that um, it just really allowed me to to have that understanding and I think it allows my clients to understand too that they can talk to me about it because I will keep it real with them and I'll let them know that if there's one thing that Melody knows is the struggle. So I just think um, that, yeah, my experience as a, as a client and participant of the housing program and going from that hopeless, you know, home, uh, youth experiencing homeless to being a, um, a provider on the other side and, and be able to offer that help back um, it just it's just something that speaks 
like the action itself speaks more than what I can tell you. I don't know. Um, I'm really grateful that my clients feel like they can talk to me about it because I know that I went through what I went through for a reason and I feel like this is that very reason. Melody, you've had an incredible journey. Well done. I'm sure you can attest to the amazing support structure that North County Lifeline has within its staff and volunteers, interns, and of course also with the community partnership. So this year, due to COVID-19 restrictions, we are honoring our guests a little differently this year, but the sentiment is the same. So please join me in recognizing the 2020 Lifeline Awards honorees. First, the Community Impact Award. This award celebrates an individual company or organization who has been a champion for change in the community, inspiring people to work together for a better future. The 2020 Community Impact Award is awarded to Sue Reynolds and Community Housing Works. Sue received her award prior to the event and would like to accept on behalf of herself and Community Housing Works. Thanks, Lifeline, for this wonderful award on behalf of Community Housing Works and, of course, myself. At Community Housing Works, we begin with the idea that opportunity only starts with a stable home, and that's why our work with Lifeline has been so important to the future of our residents. It's been our honor to partner all over North County with Lifeline, but most specifically in Vista here, First, changing the futures of hundreds of homeless parents and their kids uh, through our affordable apartments and Lifeline's case management support. And most recently, supporting the futures of our youth who are coming out of foster care. Again, combining the one-two punch of community housing works, affordable apartments and affordable apartment community with Lifeline's individual services. It has been a great partnership. Uh, we commit to be here for the North County communities, here for excellence, here for impact, and here for the long haul. It's an honor to do that. It will be an honor to do that going forward. You have our commitment for the long haul. Now to the Connector of the Year Award. This award celebrates an individual, company, or organization who has been a master networker to benefit North County Lifeline's clients. This honoree has developed strong community relationships that have been invaluable in allowing Lifeline to continue its mission of building self-reliance in youth, adults, and families in our community. The 2020 Connector of the Year Award goes to Ginger Shaw. Ginger received her award prior to the event and has recorded her acceptance for us now. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of the North County Lifeline 2020 Lifeline Awards. And a very big thank you for the special honor of receiving the Connector of the Year Award. I am all about connecting. I love to connect people to the work of the community as well as people in a collaborative way to each other to support the work of the community. And I, so this is an especially important honor to receive from North County Lifeline because North County Lifeline is an organization who for almost 50 years has used creative, innovative, collaborative means to meet the needs of the community. So thank you very much for recognizing my efforts. But I do have to say that with collaboration with connecting. Both of those words start with co, which means with. You don't do this alone. And it's been my privilege to serve with many other people, including the great staff and interns at North County Lifeline. So I'd like to share this honor with that staff from North County Lifeline, with their interns, with my team at California Against Slavery, with the San Diego Human Trafficking Advisory Council, and with our newly formed Southern California Safe Shelter Collaborative. Thank you and keep up the great work. Now to the Client Advocate of the Year Award. This award celebrates an individual company or organization who has been a voice for North County Lifeline's youth and families in the community. These honorees have made Lifeline's mission their personal motto and reflect our vision and values in all they do. The 2020 Client Advocate of the Year Award belongs to Fanny Yu and Mary Ellen Barrett. Fanny and Mary Ellen now on their award. 
Good afternoon, Lifeline Board of Directors, staff, honor guests, fellow awardees, and friends. Thank you so much. I am honored to receive this year's Client Advocate of the Year Award. I have to first thank my husband, who is a therapist, for taking the heavy load of caring for our two children. Because of what he does, I can be available to help others in need. I would also like to appreciate my two boys who understand why their mommy has to take calls at nights and weekends because she's helping kids in need. And my boss, San Diego County District Attorney Summer Steffen, has more than a decade been partnering with Lifeline because she understands that prevention work and providing meaningful intervention services and support require collaboration between law enforcement and community partners. And as a juvenile justice prosecutor for the last eight years, I've been able to see firsthand the amazing work that countless Lifeline staff have done to provide services to our youth and their families to restore hope, to be able to have tangible means for them to succeed in school and also to get out of potential gang risk or activities. And through that, the youth feel empowered and it's amazing to see. And I have had the privilege these years to be able to work closely with Lifeline staff through our Juvenile Behavior Health Court, JFAST, and our CSEC Collaborative Court, RISE. We do live in unprecedented times, and now more than ever, the clients and their families need support. And I know that Lifeline is there to provide it. However, as a kind of also a reminder to myself, we must never forget that in these difficult times, as we tirelessly give to others, we must also take care of ourselves. And so we're in this together, and I know that Lifeline is there for our youth and for their families, and I wanna thank all the staff for all of your dedication, leadership, and partnership and the difference that you make every day in the clients' lives. Thank you again. Good morning, everyone. I wanna thank you very much for receiving this award from North County Lifeline. It's absolutely beautiful. When I found out I was receiving this award, I was both surprised and, up and humbled. In receiving this award, I need to acknowledge that it's not just me, that it's a whole team behind and around me. And it's from my boss who allows me to do what I do to everyone who has taught me along the way and answered my very many questions on a variety of subjects that makes me an effective advocate for anyone who is vulnerable. I consider myself lucky to work with North County Lifeline and the very dedicated people at North County Lifeline. You never take a day off from providing the high quality services to the community that the community members need, even in light of COVID-19. So today's theme is under construction, which is very apt. We are all under construction because we've all had to pivot in the way that we accomplish our missions and provide our services in this time of COVID-19. But the most vulnerable in our community need us to do that. And I believe that we are stepping up and accomplishing our goals. When I look to the future, I think we can all acknowledge it's gonna be difficult. There are economic problems, the mental health problems that will be because of this pandemic. But I'm confident that working together, as we always do, we will be able to meet these challenges head on. Thank you again for this incredible award and for all that you do every day to help those in our community that need the help. I look forward to working with North County Lifeline for a very long time to come. Thank you. The Outstanding New Volunteer Award recognizes an outstanding volunteer who went above and beyond to support our community in their first year of volunteer service with North County Lifeline. This year awarded to Allison Wine. Hi. Thank you to everyone at Lifeline for putting on this award ceremony. Each day, so many people come together to help our youth become self-sufficient by providing the tools and resources to encourage success. A special thanks to Katie, Eleni, Melody, Alicia, and Kristen for always making me feel like a valuable member of the Life Spring family. This award means so much to me because it reminds me that I'm a part of something that represents authentic compassion 
and inclusion, not just for the participants, but for everyone who walks through the doors. My experience as a volunteer reminded me that we all play a unique role in each other's lives. We're all important and we all matter. Thank you so much. And never forget the work that the interns do. Lots of good work. The outstanding new intern award person who went above and beyond to support our community in their first year of volunteer service with North County Lifeline goes to Brenda Viafana. Brenda received her award prior to the event and would like to share a few words. Thank you for giving me the outstanding new intern award. Lifeline and Communities in Action has provided me with an amazing learning experience that I'll never forget. I also wanted to thank Sarah, Graciela, Angie, and Bianca for being an amazing support system throughout my internship. And just really thank you again for everything and the opportunity that I've been given at Lifeline. The Happy Lifeliner for a Volunteer Award is for a volunteer who never fails to have a smile on their face. This award recognizes the volunteer who makes us laugh, gives us inspiration, and lifts us up, even on stressful days or when we're working in some really challenging situations. The 2020 Happy Lifeliner for a Volunteer Award is awarded to Edgar Ramos. Hello, Lifeliners. My name is Edgar Ramos. I am the recipient of the Happy Lifeliner Award for a Volunteer. I am honored and humbled to be receiving this award. I want to thank Annabelle and Megan for giving me the opportunity to volunteer at this great organization. While at North County Lifeline, I volunteered with Annabelle and Megan for the Adopt-A-Family campaign. I was truly impressed by all the staff and the hard work that they put into making sure their clients and their families had presents under the Christmas tree each year. Reading every email that came to me, I saw the passion the staff had, has to serve their clients. I also began an internship at Club Crown Heights Attending um, Clumcart Heights was a humbling experience. I got to work with amazing kids who allowed me into their world. We worked on homework and played games. It is easy to see the potential each and one of these kids has, and I'm grateful to Poncho and Barb for allowing these kids to express themselves and provide them a place to unite at Club Crown Heights. Unfortunately, uh, COVID-19 cut my time short there. If there is ever another opportunity where I can attend, I will surely be there. Once again, thank you to all the staff who wake up every morning and to serve all these families in need. Thank you once again for all this incredible award. The Happy Lifeliner for an Intern Award is for an intern who never fails to have a smile on their face. 2020's recipient is Allison Ware. Hi, North County Lifeline. I just wanted to say thank you for putting on this amazing virtual event and honoring so many incredible people. I am honored to um, receive the Happy Lifeliner Award. Um, shout out to Project Life who made my time at North County Lifeline amazing and so insightful and is going to um, better me and the rest of my career. Um, shout out to all you amazing women who make Project Life run, who answer calls in the middle of the night, who um, come to clients in their most vital time of need, and your work does not go unnoticed, and thank you for the award. Happy Lifeliner. <laughs> Love you guys. Miss you guys. Um, thank you. Now to the Volunteer of the Year Award, inspired by Mike Cavateo, who was a long-standing volunteer and member of North County Lifeline's Board of Directors. He demonstrated the highest standard of service in helping the organization move its mission forward. His service is best described through his overall commitment to the organization and our clients, his proactive approach to helping the participants and partners of the organization, and his action-oriented attitude at addressing challenges and opportunities. The 2020 Volunteer of the Year Award goes to Susie Bradshaw. Susie received her award prior to the event and has recorded a few words to accept this honor. I would like to thank North County Lifeline for the honor that they are giving me this year, but let you know that it's my total joy to work with the kids over at Club Crown Heights um, over the past five years. And my goal has always been just to encourage the kids and give them confidence and in their strengths and just a vision for a positive future. And each of those kids has a story to tell or 
um, uh, a dream to share and um, thoughts that always surprise me. And our time together is heartfelt and fun and funny and um, it's just rich, far beyond my expectations. But Lifeline has provided me a space, space over there for reading with the kids and hopefully we'll be back in that space space soon but um, it's provided this area that's welcoming and the kids want to come in and whether I'm in there with one student or 15 kids gathered around um, um, they're just hungry to learn and it's always a, a great experience but thank you Lifeline for your passion for reaching a community that's full of kids with so much potential and uh, a joy for life. And thank you so much again for this honor. So what an extraordinary group of honorees. Lifeline has such great supporters, including their board of directors. Please welcome North County Lifeline's board president, Paul Garza. Hi, I'm Paul Garza. I currently serve as the board president of North County Lifeline and on our executive committee. Giving back to my community is important to me and I feel a strong responsibility to model how critical service is for my daughters. They're a big part of why I joined the Lifeline Board of Directors in 2014. I believe in the mission of North County Lifeline to build self-reliance among youth, adults, and families throughout all of San Diego County. I'm particularly passionate about the LifeSpring program and their ability to help facilitate the transition of youth and young adults on their journey to self-reliance. Lifeline has over 30 programs dedicated to its mission and I ask that you continue to support these programs as they need it now more than ever. COVID-19 has had a tremendous impact on the communities North County Lifeline serves. And even with the funds raised through the emergency fund this spring, the needs of, the Lifeline's, of Lifeline's clients have increased from food insecurities to financial instability. I'd like to remind you that every dollar counts. Whether you're able to give a little or a lot, we appreciate your contribution and support of our mission. The old adage holds true that teamwork makes the dream work. I've been encouraged in recent months to see local companies rally their staff to donate to North County Lifeline. Local sewing groups have worked tirelessly to support, supply face masks to our staff and clients, and countless organizations have responded to our call to action. With your help, we will continue to build communities, strengthen families, and fulfill our mission in San Diego for years to come. Thanks so much and goodbye.